Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because of their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the Spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith in the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stone, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, it is value, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. A stone that will make people stumble, and a stone and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the words, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of His own, so that you may announce the, the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful.
Oh, my God. 
has shown us something of the love of God and made it real and present in our world. If we look around today and we look at the mothers that we may know, we see again living stones, people who are hard at work building up the body of Christ, building up the body of Christ by the way they love the other members of their family, especially their children, how they work hard to, to make sure that they have a good life, that they worry about, that they care about, that they sacrifice for them. We see that over and over again. And even now, in this present pandemic situation that we find ourselves in, with all of our schools being closed now for almost two months, we've seen mothers and fathers doing, doing a new task, something that they usually entrusted to the, the schools and the teachers in the schools to accomplish. They're needing to share in an intimate sort of way with the education of their children. And they do it because they love their children. They do it because they know that education is important, that knowledge is important, and that their children need them to do this for them. And so they give of themselves. They sacrifice again. They show us what it means uh, to, be, to be a mother. But they also show us, especially for those of for us who are Christians, we see them undertaking this task of being a living stone, of doing the thing that God asked us to do when he reached out to us on the day of our baptism and shared his mission with us. They are working and sacrificing so that their family can grow stronger, their church can grow stronger, their children can grow stronger, and the plan of So today, as we think about what God is calling all of us to do, because all of us, whether we're men or women, whether we're mothers or not mothers, God is asking all of us to participate in His mission, to be a living stone, to, to, to listen to what He's saying to us so that we can become this, this, this living church of His that, that brings his message, his love, his peace into our world. So today is especially is a day in which we, we, we think about our mothers. We thank God for the gift of all the mothers in our community. We thank God for all of our own mothers, especially perhaps for those who are already in heaven, that God will continue to pour out his love and his blessings and his salvation on them and care for them with great love. So as we celebrate today, as we all think about in this Easter season, we think about our vocation to be a Christian, to be part of the Church of Jesus, the body of Christ. We especially thank God for the, for the gift of motherhood, a way in which so many sisters live out live out that call to be a living stone and become an example not only for their children but also for all of us what it means to be the church of Jesus today, what it means to become a sign to one another of the love that God wants to pour out on our world. So let us pray for everyone today during this pandemic time we pray especially for all of the people who are hurting or, or, or suffering because of, uh, of this, uh, you know, dealing with this uh, coronavirus in our midst, but especially let us pray for all of our mothers that they can undertake their mission today and do it well. And we pray that God will fill all of our hearts with gratitude and the wonderful witness all of our mothers give to each of us. God bless you.
us join together in our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. And I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And dear brothers and sisters, filled with Easter joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. For those baptized this year, and for all baptized in the world, that Christ who is in glory be our constant inspiration and joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders and citizens of our country, Inspire others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For mothers, women who cannot conceive, and those who have lost children, that they receive grace to enjoy their blessings and bear their crosses. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For everyone in this local church, that we show forth God's love and word and deed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. especially for all those who are uh, affected by this uh, coronavirus, uh, those who are sick from it, those who have died, those who uh, are putting their lives at risk by entering uh, onto essential services, those who just find it difficult to obey the stay-at-home rules, that everyone who is uh, suffering under, under this, these current conditions will experience uh, strength from the Lord and be truly able to, uh, to bear witness to one another as we pray that God will heal us and take this virus away from us very soon. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we are our prayer. And let us pray.
said the blessing. He gave the challenge to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Lead us not into 
Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
present to your people, we pray, O Lord. And lead those who have been viewed with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Archdiocese has uh, asked us to announce a, a small change in, in terms of visiting Catholic cemeteries here in the Archdiocese of Newark. Beginning on Mother's Day this weekend, the, the cemeteries will be open for visitation on Sunday from 8 in the morning until 5 in the afternoon. And, uh, but all of the usual precautions need to be in place. You need to wear a mask, and we need to maintain social distancing from one another. So there shouldn't be large groups with just uh, one or, or, or two people uh, keeping the distance from, from one another. Uh, but this is a, a change since we haven't been allowed to visit the Senate graves in the cemetery for the last two months. Uh, this uh, this uh, new regulation will be in effect on Sundays, beginning on Mother's Day, but continuing into the future. Also, it's contemplated now that on May the 18th, which is a Monday, that the cemeteries will also be opening for visitation Monday through Friday from 3 in the afternoon until, uh, I believe, it's 6 in the evening. Um, they're opening later because Middle services are being held in the cemeteries in the morning and the early afternoon, and uh, so they don't want to have too many people in the cemetery at the same time. So uh, 